It was the 26th day of March in 2020 when I brought Larissa, the lockdown Land Rover, home and commenced the lockdown rebuild. I'm getting on quite well with things now and the whole body's done, the underneath has all been refurbished. Now I'm turning my attention to the doors. The back door first. It's looking pretty scruffy on the outside and pretty scruffy on the inside. Lots of dents in the frame where it's been closed ruthlessly on things that are sticking out the back. There's a big buckle bend in the grab handle and some horrendous dents in the skin. So let's start pulling this thing apart and piece by piece I'll make it great again. After pulling those awful carpet tiles off the inside of the door, the next thing to do is to unfold the lip on the skin so that the skin can be removed from the frame. To do that, I'm going to be using this. It's a small 8 inch pry bar, made for carpenters I guess, for pulling nails and things out. But now that I've got the skin off, we can see the back of the frame. And we can get to the rust in the door lock recess. So first job is get the wire brush on the grinder and remove the excess rust. Then I'll be opening up the frame and having a look inside. You can see these horrendous dents at the bottom where people have closed the door on bits that are sticking out. So I've got to drill the spot welds, remove these sections of the inside of the frame, then I can get in with some tools to the outside of the frame and get on with removing those dents. Drilling out the spot welds, you choose a drill that's the same diameter as the spot welds, usually 3 16th, about 4 millimeters, and you grind that drill so it's got less of a point than normal. That helps it to not drill through the second skin, and it just removes the spot weld. The job's completed by getting in with that thin pry bar that I was using before, and that can be used to split the two skins apart, and this outer piece can be removed, giving full access to the inside. Here it is, wire buffed and all opened up. I've panel beated those dents out through the holes, and I'm now starting to weld the pieces back on where they were before. I'll turn the welder up reasonably high, that'll give me a good molten weld puddle and I can replicate the look of the original spot welds through those holes. I've used the CRC rust converter to spray the inside of the frame and all of the outside that I've been able to wire brush to give the thing a good stable coating for the paint. Before I fit the skin and paint the frame, I'm going to paint it with Gilsonite. Gilsonite is a really, really old formula of paint. It was used by Henry Ford on the chassis of the Model T. Gilsonite's related to bitumen. It's a very, very thick, tarry coating, but unlike bitumen, it does dry completely. But it stays soft and will absorb any scratches and almost self-repairs in warm weather. It's also a anti... what's the word for this? It's an anti... not antiviral, but it will stop growth of moss, mould and mildew and it gets used as anti-fouling on canal boats in freshwater canals. Amazing stuff and dirt cheap. 
I use it for all of my chassis and suspension work, inside door frames, you can't beat this stuff. I've just got back from my mate Dave's workshop. Dave's a sheet metal worker, he actually makes hinges for a living. And he always has aluminium in the place and he's got a nice folder and a guillotine. So I've been in there and made the preliminary parts of this door. But it's now evening, I've got the lights on and I've come home and I'm putting the finishing touches to it. This is the hole that I've already cut out with tin snips. And I'm now going round with an 8 inch crescent just easing over the edge by 3 or 4 millimetres to give it a nice rounded finish. Aluminium's great to work with. Compared to steel, it's like plasticine. Really forgiving. So what I'm doing here, being careful not to get the corners of the jaw digging into the aluminium because it's soft. I'm being very gentle with it. I'm just easing over the edges of this hole and then I'll find a suitable tool, a piece of bar or maybe even a socket that I can push into these corners and tap with a hammer and that'll complete the nice rounded edge. And I'll just tease these edges down, finish it up with a file and then I can fit this door skin to my newly painted and rust proof and dent repaired frame. It's actually taken me a total of four days to work on this so paying somebody to do a restoration as I said in the last video can be out of the reach of most people. I've always been a bit of a tight ass and I've learned a great range of skills, bought a lot of tools second hand and I've found there's a lot of things that I can handle at home and there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to as well. Right, now the tool I'm using here is a tapered bar with a handle on the end that's normally used by riggers for lining up holes so that they can get bolts through. But because it's tapered, it gives me the opportunity to finish these corners with a beautiful rounded radius and the hammer lets me work on the flat areas. I'll have this ready to fit in no time. This tool is called a bumping iron, used by panel beaters for panel beating soft metals or areas that would be easily damaged by a hammer. It stops the bruising, gives a much, much larger surface area and gives you a much smoother finish. Finish the raw edges with a dolly and then I can file it up and call it done. Right. Clear table, soft cloth, you know what that means. Assembly time. I've got the door that I painted yesterday, two pack paint means that the paint is already nice and hard. Here's my skin. First job I've got to do is tuck it under the existing pieces of skin that didn't need to be replaced. That's a bit of a struggle to tell you the truth, I don't mind saying. Once those two tongues are under, and it's firmly down, I can turn the thing over and 
let's start working on bringing down those seams to clamp it to the frame. There's that bumping iron again. Panel beating requires a huge amount of imp improvisation. There are so many tools that you would only use for one particular job. Usually you make them out of pieces of wood or pieces of bent metal. But the favourite ones, you either remember what you used or you throw them into the toolbox for the next time. I've got several shaped pieces of wood, um, solid chunks of steel with smooth edges. So what I'm doing here is just teasing over the edges. I'm not doing one side completely at a time. What I'm doing is trapping the frame within the skin evenly all the way around. So I'll bring a little bit over here and a little, little bit over there to make sure that the skin is centralized on the frame. You'll remember that earlier I painted the frame with the Gilsonite black tarry bitumen type paint. That's forming a barrier between the steel frame and the aluminium skin so that hopefully there'll be none of the electrolysis that caused the problems in the first place. As I've said in other videos and earlier in this video, one of the downfalls of Land Rover is electrolytic corrosion due to dissimilar metals because those metals aren't insulated between each other. So I'm paying particular attention on just that, insulating the dissimilar metals to stop the corrosion and hopefully this Landy will easily last another 50 years. I've opted to make this door skin out of a grade of alloy that's 20% thicker than the original. That's so that hopefully it's going to be a little bit more resistant to general wear and tear, knocks and bangs. But one problem that that does give me is that this outside edge is a little fatter than the original look because of the thicker aluminium. So I'm using the bumping iron to bring down the radius of that curve, tighten it up, make it sit up nice and firmly against the door's frame, and just give it that original look. This will take me 15 or 20 minutes to work the way round and take out any bruising that I put in. It's not something that the average person can just jump in and do, like turning a switch. It's a skill that you have to learn over the years. You just feel your way along and you can tell where the high spots are. You can probably see in the camera where, as I work towards the camera, the radius of the bend is reduced and it, it just tightens up. I will have to put a good coat of um, 2D primer over this and wait probably two days for that to dry and then I can block that back and just take any of the tiny marks out that I'm putting in around the edge here before the final paint. Ooh. Here's my posh steering wheel. That's going to be the subject of a video on its own. I never thought I would see the day when I had to 
refurbish the steering wheel but that also happened in the last week so here's the door primed up round the edges I've only used the kind of stuff that you could buy in cans at the local hardware store because I've decided that I'm not going to use fancy products anymore I want to use the stuff that you guys can get hold of in your town I've been bread bagging again not tea bagging bread bagging bread bagging's my way of cleaning paint off small parts without any labor at all I put a little bit of lacquer thinners or uh, strong paint thinners in the plastic bag put the part in and just leave it for 24 hours in the warm sun and the paint just drops off I haven't had much luck with paint stripper so this works just as well saves me buying the stuff I'm gonna give these a quick cleanup and get them ready to paint and I'll paint these while I paint the rear door when I'm painting I always paint the edges and any of the difficult places to get to first and then I'll put on a nice wet first coat leave that to flash off for five or ten minutes and then I'll come back and put a nice heavy gloss coat on the thing well we're getting very close to being finished now I've got all of the window rubbers and door rubbers soaking in caustic soda to get the old paint overspray off them and then I'm going to show you in the next video a trick for softening old rubber and we're also going to be tending to the rat-eaten seats and I'm going to show you how I refurbished that lovely steering wheel